एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल टुडे वी आर डाइविंग इन टू अ सुपर यूजफुल कॉन्सेप्ट इन सर्विस नाउ दैट इज इनहेरिटेंस व्हिच वी कैन यूज इट टू स्क्रिप्टिंग क्लू इफ यू आर डेवलपर लुकिंग टू मेक योर कोड मोर मॉड्यूलर एंड रियूजेबल दिस वीडियो इज फॉर यू सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड और राइट लेट्स स्टार्ट विद लेट्स स्टार्ट बाय बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग व्हाट स्क्रिप्टिंग क्लूज आर थिंक ऑफ स्क्रिप्टिंग क्लू एज रियूजेबल ब्लॉक ऑफ कोड दैट यू कैन कॉल फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ सर्विस नाउ दे सेव from you from writing the same code multiple times reading it right let's now understand what exactly the inheritance is so inheritance is a way to create a new script include based on the existing one this new script include can be you use all the methods functions and properties we can call it as variables okay from the existing one and can also have its own additional methods and properties it's like inheriting the traits from your parent but adding your own unique traits to it this try to understand in a simpler term so for an example my my father is owning three houses okay just an example he is not owning a house just an example if he is owning three houses now you can consider it as a parent script include which has three functions those three houses right now as a part of inheritance i am his child right so those three uh, functions are already in my portfolio right so i have those particular three functions uh, access to those three functions also those three houses also along with that i can create my own new house or we can consider in technical terms function so this is how the data is works we'll be seeing in more detail okay in this particular tutorial so let's get started so let's start with a basic example so what i will do i will create a scripting code over here scripting code Okay, and what we'll do? We will name this particular scripting to a parent. So I will just as parent and scripting to, and I already have the code handy with me. Okay, because typing this code will take tons of my time. So what we'll do? We'll create a scripting to, and I will be explaining the what exactly it's doing. So this is a parent scripting to, and it has initialize function. Okay, and a parent method, which is this is a method from the parent. So that's it. We have nothing else. So we can save this out. So this is all about the parent function. Now let's create a child function also, which extends the parent script. Okay. Let's see how we can do it. I will just save this out, and we'll create a new function called the child script. So I will again go. Particular, I'm using some shortcut using S N U this. So, and I will paste this code out. Its name is child script include. So I will just copy paste this name out. And what exactly we are doing in this particular function? So, like parent function, we have one function in this particular script include also called child method. And it simply states that this is a child, this is a method from the child script. That's it. Okay. But what? Additionally, we are doing over here. We are extending the scripting to the parent script. You can see, and this the syntax to extend any script. So it object extend, take parent script in. And that's it. Now, with this particular modification which we have done to the script, this script include the child script include has an access to the parent script include also and also the function of the child script. You don't believe it, right? So let's see. So what we do? I will simply go to the background script and let's see if it has method. Okay, so we can see. Ah, uh, I'm just extending the child script include out. Okay, and I'm calling the function from a parent script include also, and also the child script. So see if we get the output or not. And I can simply. Run the script, and you can see there's a method. Let me zoom. Okay, there's a method from parent script include. There's a method from the child. Perfect, right? Now one more thing, right? Oh, uh, if we consider this particular function now. Now, as it's a parent-child relation, right? Being a parent, a uh, being a child, you get a lot of privileges. For example, now we have a function child method. prior script include we had a function called parent method right so let's try 
if we can modify the command from the parent to the child script and I will be showing why exactly it's important also. So I will do function. I'm just overriding the method, okay, from the parent. From the parent. And we will forget what exactly was. So it was like this is a parent script include written over there, right? As I said. We'll just change it out and we'll do just dot info. And we can get this is a parent function. Done. Modified by child. Sounds interesting, right? So, and we will save this out. But I'm uh, missing something. Okay. I'm missing a comma. And again, save this out. Now, again, let's try the same and see like, this time what exactly is happening. So we'll go to the background strip in and let's paste the same code in and let's see what happens. So now we can see it got changed. So this is a parent function modified by child. Okay. So now what we did, there was a parent function in the parent child script include. We have just overridden that particular function. Now you must be thinking where exactly it's useful. So it's very useful when in script include in service now we have a lot of script include which are uh, what we can say protected ones, right? You can modify body that. But you want to modify certain things, certain statements, certain queries of that particular script include. This is a way you can do it. You can simply open that particular script include and override the function from that particular script. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, I know. It's amazing. Now let's move to let's jump into our first example. Well, we we will be creating parent script include called vehicle so that you can uh you can connect more with this example. So we will have parent script include called vehicle and a child script include called car. The child script include will inherit methods and properties from the parent. And let's see how it's done. So let's create a new script include only. Slash new and this is the function which is a vehicle class. Okay. So vehicle is a parent. And what exactly we are doing over here? So basically it has two parameters into initialize function type by speed. So it's getting initiated with type by speed. And there's a function called describe. What it returns that this is a vehicle, whatever will type of the Vehicle and it goes with this particular speed. Perfect. So, this is the vehicle scripting load. We'll save this out. And here we will define one, one more scripting load called the child scripting. So, what will be the child of vehicle class? It may be car, it may be bicycle, it may be bike, anything because all those four are the subset of the vehicle. Model. So we'll create create new and over here I will just drop the function. The function the class is car. Okay. It has one attribute only speed. Okay, why speed only? Why not two attributes like parent class? Because now we are hard coding the car out because it's a car class, right? Speed will be an entity and we are extending out by the vehicle class. So here we are passing the attributes to the vehicle class initialize function. One is the hard coded attribute which is called car, and the second one is the speed. Then we have added one more additional function called home, which is done BB. Okay. So I think this is good. And let's see how exactly it goes. I think this is pretty clear, right? MS, this, we have to name this particular form, right? This particular you can say class out. So, what we have done over here in our class, car class, okay, we have extended the object of the vehicle class to inherit the vehicle of the printing load. The initialize function method calls the parent initialize method with type set to car which is hardcoded 
then we can also add a new method called hop. So I will save this out. Now we will go back to what? Background script. And now we can create an instance of car with a speed for instance, say oh, 120 miles per hour. We can call both the describe method from the parent class and the home method from this child class. We can do anything. Okay. So let's try with this particular thing. Okay. So here what I'm doing, I'm just uh, calling the car class. Okay. Yes. Uh, creating an object of the car class, instantiating the car class. And I've called two functions car dot describe, which will call the function from the parent class. Okay. And then car dot home, which will call the function from the car, child car class. And this should be the output. And let's see if it works. If we run, we got this is a vehicle. This vehicle is a car from where? From the hardcore developer. Huh? And it goes at 120 miles per hour. Okay. And also we got the function of bank, okay, which returns BP. Isn't it amazing, right? It gives so much flexibility. You can you can modularize your code, for example, in vehicle. You can have a car class. Okay. Vehicle will be paired to the car class. Car can be paired to probably car types, right? Like sedan, XUV, then hatchback. And you can you can create a different segments. You can override the function out so that you, you don't have to write all the functions for each and every class, right? This is really amazing. Let's look into one more class. A very interesting example. Okay. So here we will have a class called animal with an initial method that sets the name and the species of the animal. Okay. And we can, we also have a, oh, let's see how exactly. So I will just copy, copy my created code. I will again, we have to go to scripting. My bad. Scripting includes dash new. I will just paste the code. I will explain you out what exactly we are doing over here. And we will let's create first parent class only. So I will just so the parent class will be of name animal. And what exactly we are doing? We have initializing it out with name and species. Okay, what is the name of the animal? What is the species of the animal? And then we have a function called make sound. Okay. And which have some generic, some generic animals. So this is the function. We will just make give the name of the function, and there's a parent class, and we can save this out. Perfect. Now let's create a child class. Let's create a child class. A dog. Everyone likes dog. So I will give script ignore. Then. And this is the code for the dog class. So what exactly we are doing over here? Again, we are extending animal class. Okay. We are just passing name. You can pass all the attributes also. But here we will pass name and we will make species as the second parameters as constant right now. And we can have make sound as poof. Okay. So over here, what exactly we are doing? Okay. Here we are overriding the make sound function from the parent. Okay, that's the first thing. Also, we are just hardcoding one of the attributes. So let's see how exactly it goes. And we will get this particular dog out. That's it. And done. Now what we'll try to do in the background scheme, we'll try to access the variable from the first class. And calling the overridden function from the this particular class. Access. So let's see background script. And this. So here what I'm doing, I'm just um, initializing the doc class. I'm just giving the name because species has already been hard coded. Okay. And now I just want to make what exactly I'm just calling the function big sound, which is present. We have already discussed this particular thing out, okay? But with example, I want to discuss this out. 
so we are just extending the same function okay which is present in the parent but we are trying to override it out into the child which is a make out and then we have my species of uh, dog okay which is coming from this particular variable as you can see we have defined it in the parent class so we are getting the variable from the parent class let's see if it goes through so what was the make sound written from the parent class it was some general canvas and we are just making it more specific so this is the uh, this is the condition out there right that whenever you go to from parent to child you will be making more specifications okay it will be you are just narrowing down the scope of the answer makes sense right so if we run it out so we got the answer from the child class and also the species name from the parent class perfect right so here what we have done we have created an instance of the dog with the name party okay we can call both the make sound method from the class child class and access the species property that by the parent class easy and efficient right and that's it you have learned you have just learned how to use inheritance in service class to prepare to create modular and reusable code by using inheritance you can keep your code clean organized and easy to maintain if you found this particular video helpful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more some tips and tricks thanks for watch watching and see you in the next video